Hey guys, welcome back to Worlds. I'm Devin Pyrotechnics Young, of course, and I am joined by the Koo Tigers. Pray to ask a little bit about that last game. Unfortunately, it didn't really go the way that you guys had wanted, but talk to me a little bit about it. How do you feel at the end of that? I don't think we were well prepared for their opponents to blanc pick, and that's why the game didn't go as we wanted to. Well, sometimes things can definitely blindside you in that best of one, but now you are, of course, going to be the number two seed. So tell me about how you plan to prep for that and eventually maybe meet up against the Flash Wolves again. 결과론적으로 이제 조 2위로 8강에 진출하게 됐는데 이제 2위 시드로서 다음 8강을 어떻게 준비할 거고 뭐 나, 만약에 나중에 다시 한번 플래시볼 팀과 붙게 된다면 어떻게 준비할 것인지 말씀해 주세요. 어 <웃음> 사실 1시드로 올라가서 좀 2시 그러니까 나 다른 팀들이랑 붙는 게더 쉬울 것 같아서 무조건 1시드로 올라가고 싶었는데 1시드로 어차피 못 알아 못 올라갔기 때문에 어쩔 수 없다고 생각하고요. 뭐 다음에 만나면 잘할 um, we are hoping to advance as a first seed because we thought it would be easier to play against other groups, um, groups second seed. But I guess this is the result, and hopefully, we can play a better match when we, if we meet Flash Wolves in the upper stage. Hopefully, indeed. Well, thanks for joining me once again, and good luck to you guys moving forward. Now, back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Pyra. Right now, we're going to dive right into our final match in Group A, Pain Gaming versus Counter Logic Gaming. Now, neither of these teams is going to advance to the, uh, into the bracket stage. We know that. However, we're competing on the world stage here, so it would be wrong to say that there's nothing on the line. Both of these teams are still looking to prove uh, you know, that they deserve to be here, that they can take the victories, and looking to walk away with the pride of it. So, between these two teams, thoughts on how this matchup is going to play out, CLG's been looking, you know, down in the dumps today. Yeah, they certainly have. And there's a lot on the line for the wildcard regions, especially because no wildcard regions have ever taken two games in a group stage. So, like, Payne have a lot to fight for here. We said that they were the best wildcard region coming in. Now it's time to, like, I guess chalk up, prove it, and see if they can steal a win off CLG in the last game. And CLG are fighting for pride. They want to end on a high note because this was the group that... When it came out and the draw happened, everybody's like, this is the faith group. This is the people getting rewarded. This and is the group of life for them. They, they, as high a note as they can possibly get <laughs> is beating Pain in the last game. <sighs> it's still, like I said, down in the dumps. They don't feel too good about this, but this is kind of the last little bit of redemption they can get out of it. Crumbs? Anything? Uh, I mean, I know it's tough for you. It, it's not tough for me personally. I mean, I'm personally very excited that the next way we get to compete here, I'm like, wow, you know, these teams have really laid out a path to, to beat CLG. But for now, I think this is going to be a much closer matchup. You know, CLG has struggled tremendously today as opposed to what we saw on the first day. But I suppose it's the tendencies of what happened the first day and how they, the first week and how they got kind of exploited by Ku and the other teams really taking advantage of it. And that is actually what surprised me about CLG. We were complimenting their support staff and how they're doing a fantastic job. And then they get exploited one game and it all fell to pieces today. I was really surprised yeah. that this is the way it went. I had really good hopes for this CLG lineup and it just didn't seem to pan out. All right, I want to push us along to predictions here. Final game of the day, closing out Group A, gentlemen. I think CLG will win this game. I think that Zyrene's right. There is actually a lot to play for for the North American side. They will want to win this convincingly. Yeah, I'm also going to go with CLG for the reasons I stated. They definitely have a lot on the line. We've got to play for keeps right now. All righty. I mean, even though I think right now CLG has the mental fortitude of a sun-dried tomato, I think they're probably going to still be able to take the game just because... The first time they played against Payne, it was a very one-sided match. Take away the Twisted Fate, and we'll probably see something along the lines of hope of a team. What are you trying to say about sun-dried tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> their, their mental fortitude <laughs> is they absolutely spend a lot of high. Time, they spend a lot of time in the sun, and they're still tomatoes, right? They're, they're making it work. They're doing uh, the best they can. <laughs> That's enough of this. We're going to throw it over to our casters, Riv, Jat, and Kobe. Whoa. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It has been a, a very interesting day. I mean, these are my picks, right? I'm not really sure what happened across the board, but right now, Chronologic Gaming and Pain, you just need to leave it all on the rift. Yeah, man, have some fun.
Just take yeah. it to the rim. I mean, there's a certain element of fun to this and also a certain element of pride. I wonder what type of mix we're going to get about, like, playing for the show and playing to win because ultimately this will make the difference between no. third and fourth, at least perceived-wise. If they both finish 2-4, it would be tied for this group. I do think both teams are going to end up playing pretty hard. And something I thought was very interesting when I was standing off on the side before coming up to the desk to cast the games was when Logic Gaming got up on stage, it was interesting to not hear people chant everybody's name across the board, right? You're kind of in French territory. Yeah, people still love Logic Gaming, but you really have to earn this crowd's respect. And that's something they were used to in the NALCS Stadium, getting that backing from the crowd immediately stepping up there. Payne going up there, doing what they can without that as well. Hopefully coming out strong in this one. Yeah, a lot of respect for the North American mid lane Vegars as well yeah. so far this tournament. Both Pobelter and Incarnation. Let's see where these bands go. They will not allow Payne the Mordekaiser pick. That's first off the board. Lulu gets taken out as well. See some more assassination yeah. from the other side. Kind of logic gaming. There's that Malphite band coming back again that we saw in week one from CLG. Yep but got through in their last game today. One of the big reasons it all fell apart so quickly for COG, they focused the Malphite, couldn't kill the Malphite, consistently got initiated on by Stakes Malphite. So somewhat reactive, but mainly power bands from COG on the red side. Gangplank is through. Oh boy. All right, Kami Gangplank, let's see it. Got a smile on his face. They're ready to lock that one in. Hover the Heimer. A little bit of love to the crowd, playing with emotions. Let's see what Conologic Gaming decides to lock in for this one. Now, there are some interesting uh, strategies you can try and take against Gangplank. You definitely don't want to have to be a full melee team, uh, because any time mid-game you group up, if multiple people get hit by one of those mid-game Trinity to Force Infinity Edge barrels, then you get crushed. So going for more range and spreading out is always strong. Plus, you can kill the barrels. Here comes the Afro move Bard right off the bat. I figured we would have seen this from PYL first, but I'm, I'm going to yeah. love it. I'm sure Crepo is going to love it as well. 0-1 at Worlds so far. Kitty's had a very underwhelming yeah. performance on it during the first week of group stage. <clears throat> Bard plus Lee Sin is a very dynamic ganking combo. Uh, you can make plays. You can get some really strong magical journeys through halfway through the lane, and then Lee Sin still has two gap closers he can use. Still waiting for somebody to kick the enemy through a magical journey into the team on the other side. There's no getting out of that one. Thresh Lantern as well to save people that might get locked up in that ultimate from Bard. That tempered fate locking up the entire Kench. area. Kench could be locked in. Elise is already for Sir T. They have their junglers. They have their support. I don't know if we're going to get it with the Bard up there. Unless it's going to be Zion on the top lane, Kench. There's always that possibility. <laughs> Although he's shown such success on support. Yeah so far here at Worlds. How many champions can say 100%, man? Yeah, these next two picks are going to show us a lot about COD's team composition. You would want to kind of see a Vayne, but picking it blind into this Gangplank Elise Thresh is oh, pretty dangerous. Yeah, picking picking Vayne blind was, was double as forte in the past, right? Just always take cleanse with it. You know, right? Riven into Gangplank is actually a pretty good matchup, and it's one of the things that Zion Spartan has a lot of games on. Wouldn't be surprised to see it. I want to see it. Pole Belter has been kind of relegated to being very safe for the team, being there for damage and team fights and not zeroing people out. And it is going to be that Riven, but it can still float around. we got to wait and see. Zion usually gets the last pick for Kinologic Gaming, and that may still be what we're seeing. Looking to make individual plays here. Aphromu grabs Bard, yeah. Smithy on Lee Sin. <laughs> Zion on Riven and Double Lift on Vayne. Everybody picking their favorite champions, basically. Yeah. Trying to make those solo plays. At the same time, CLG's singular strategy that they tried to run into every game had fallen flat. 2-0 start in the group, 0-3 since then. So even though this is their last yeah. game, and even though their group chances of advancing have been ended, this could actually be a superior strategy for CLG if they end up winning here against Pain. Double Lift did go legendary the last time they played Pain Gaming. It was actually a pretty quick okay. game. The Draven from BRTT Akami takes the fate. Woo, that is See your vein, and <laughs> I raise you a Draven, as well as a Twisted Fate. Oh. Akami's victory was on Twisted Fate here in the group stage.
That was a hard top, season one. Shut down a lot of the plays that COD tried this to make around the This is a very scary pain gaming group <laughs> yeah. here. Pain They've got Steve double globals so they can throw down to a Draven Thresh lane. It's so, so easy to snowball this Draven. They've got the Thresh combo with Elise Ganks. They have two globals. With, like you, This is very, very, you can't throw much more than yeah. this at the rat. rat. It's like a dream draft for pain right now. <laughs> You can have BRTT's Callista open as well, but goes for that Draven. I like it a lot. Let's see what we have. Seven seconds on the clock as they still play the emotions of the crowd. It's going to be a more Morgana oh, pickup. So oh. Bo Belter's still going to try and enable the outplays from the rest of his teammates. Getting that yep. black shield to try and either, you know, whoever has a better start, Doublelift or Zion Spartan, get that snowball rolling. See if he sticks with teleport as well. We're gonna have people flying all across the map from get go. I like it. When these guys played in the first week, it also was coming off of like three level one games. There was like so much hype in each game. It's like people had to fight. I hope they keep with that trend and I hope we get a level one fight out of this. Yeah, I think there will be sufficient excitement from these pick and ban <laughs> phases. Getting to see Gangplank double globling up with Twisted Fate getting to see BRTT's Draven yeah. with their ability to just mob their entire team down to try and get kills, but then also double of trying to avoid it all with a mid lane powered black shield in vain. All right, does he stick with this? Let's see if- uh, Double lift himself gonna take CLG that flash look for exhaust a lane here. Makes sense. Because yeah. uh, Vayne Bard into Draven Thresh with this much global pressure and at a least skank, uh, sounds scary. Pretty scary. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm sure everybody's ready now for game six. For this match, you can weigh in by tweeting at LOL Esports with hashtag PNGWin or hashtag CLGWin if your faith is still there for a final victory here in the group stages. Group stage two, game six. Pain versus Counter Logic Gaming rematch. We're going to be on the rift, boys and girls. This crowd. Final game of the day. No tiebreakers to be played because yeah. the top two seeds in the group have been decided. Flash Wolves shocked everyone. Pain wins. They tie COG for third, but no tiebreaker will be played because it doesn't have advancement implications on top right. of it. COG looking to end the group at three and three. Ahead of Pain. The flare is out. Let's see how fast the kills come in this game. Good luck, have funds across the board from both teams. And Zion Spartan already working on the mechanics, warming up a bit of damage for that pass. Yeah, CLG could just go for the blind lane swap, uh, get out these line of scrimmage defensive wards and swap double and Aphromoo up top. Really interested to see how Payne executes the gate down to the bottom, the gate anywhere, because if Kami doesn't like his position, he could just call for a GP alt on the gate, and it'll be like, all right, I'm cool. Here's the thing, though. We're talking about, oh, yeah, GP, where there's so much globals here for pain, and they can really make the bottom lane, the bottom lane life hard for double and Aphromoo. Right. The lane itself, Gangplank versus Riven, is super hard for Gangplank. Yeah. This is a really good lane for Zion. They could snowball Zion, and if they cut Gangplank off early, don't even get him enough money or experience, then they can snowball Zion's lead on the Riven and try and punish Pain that way. Not to mention, the rest of COG also has the ability to match a 5v5 down bottom lane because they brought double TP from their soul lanes as well. That's right. If you go hard, Poe Belcher's just going to come in and soul shackle the entire crew. It'll be a bad situation. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for all of them. Who's going to make it into the best and put it in an advantage? Ah, so even though Great Pain board. did call the lane swap here, CLG's delayed invade will stop the Gromp. Yeah, that's what it looks like yeah, here. They're going to have to walk away immediately and take the lane. Double if sees it. They get the match up there. I'm sure BRTT actually is quite happy about this one once he starts getting that uh, adoration stacked up and hopefully cash in as soon as possible. Half move to the top, and we are going to get our match up lanes here. All right, so... 2v2. Two two. Yeah, they're going to take control of the minion wave here first, though. Double already missed a CS. Bad start. Come on, man. <laughs> final, final game nerves. So they actually keep it right off the turret. Perfect for BRTT. He's going to be able to farm these nicely. Got to give your support those relics, though. Got to show some love. Zion Spartan and Smithy at the top side yeah, already. Immediate four-man dive. Another wave crashing Mylon's in. already used TP, so there's no help. They are level one under their turret against four people. Uh -oh. He missed the Q. 
There's a hook, but there's too many minions there. Dude actually He's cannot dead. do anything about it. That's going to be the hit coming in. A TP from Kami, however. The gold card is late, and the kill comes up. One for one in the supports. Yeah, <laughs> the kill going to double lift, I think, benefits CLG, especially because Kami ended up burning his teleport up top lane, but yeah. sloppy dive there from CLG. Aphromoo is about six inches from those guys, and he threw the Q wide right. Not the best dive for COG to open this one up. Let's see if they answer on Zion. This is Elise, can start it out. Uh, he is post level three Elise as well. Mm -hmm. And he'll Zion. flash on Zion. Yeah, uh, Gangplank doesn't have the biggest uh, amount of damage now. It is a full health level three Riven, so. Yeah. Yeah. Got good movement in lane. Safe. Mid lane pulled Kami away, so there's a bit of a wave lead here for Pole Belter. He'll be able to keep throwing Tormented Soil down to the bottom side. The Afro is taking a bit of a roam to put a ward down, but safety with the journey back to the lane. Double lift will have nice farm here in front of the turret with help from Afro move if necessary. Will they back or will they just stay? Looks like BRTT and Dude just waiting for that lane to push back out. TP now back in from Pole Belter in the mid lane to keep a bit of that CS lead up. We're going to see Kami now going back. A little bit, you could kind of say it was a level one ish, too. <laughs> aggression, <laughs> aggression from Counterlogic Gaming there. It was some very early aggression <laughs> on level one opponents. Not a true, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Well, level two allies. Well, let's see if Pull Belter's Rome here works off. Uh, yeah, he teleported back really early to get the shove, and he knows Kami's going to be back in base. Plus, they know there's no teleports to match, but it is spotted by a warp. I like it. Four and a half minute Rome's here. Warp Knowing check. Kami's out of lane, just playing a bit of. Uh, fundamentals here on both sides. Yeah, the big thing here for the Morgana matchup is mid lane Morgana gonna try and match uh, Max, or at least put three points into Tormented Soil, enough to kill the back line by itself uh, before he transitions into upping the binding. Before he should be at two right now. Yep, yep. looks like he's ready and set to do that. Another Doran's Ring so he can keep spamming that spell out. Zion Spartan and Mylon in the bot lane here. See if Zion plays as much rush down as you think he will on this Riven. Feeding in a few auto attacks a between ward. his broken wings. It looks like he will be able to get out of this one. Q should be up in enough time. The dodge. There you go. Easy dodge. Not much lost there. Mylon actually will lose him into the turret as well for his efforts. And Zan will just go back to base. So no harm, no foul there. Let's see if the move up towards mid lane works out, though. Looks like both sets are going into the jungle. Yeah. Sir T is yeah. going to counter jungle. Aphromoo and Smithy are doing the same. They do an interesting dynamic in this game where you have the duo lanes matched up against each other, but the jungler is still kind of swapping sides uh -huh. in a vertical sense. Uh, it gives CLG a bit of a camp for double lift, but it hasn't really resulted in many advantages. BRTT is still pretty happy on CS. Yeah. Ooh. It's going to get hit. Oh. Time to go the other way. Got to go over the wall if he Burr. misses this Q. Whoa! Really? Uh, now he's just gonna... Be careful there, BRTT still in spider form, can fight, but Zion wants to be able to stay in lane with a bit of the potions he just chugged left. So, stay safe. All the attention down bottom lane, though, as well as Zion being involved in that yep. early game gank, is giving Mylon a pretty big CS lead. We were talking about the difficulty of that matchup for the gank playing. But based on the early game, Mylon getting a tremendous start. Zion. Yeah, he's just got to worry about that level six all in from Riven. If uh, they decide to send some jungle pressure down there from CLG's side. Definitely feels like Smithy's pretty happy in this jungle. He's been here for the last two minutes. Setting I up think shop. he's wasting a ton of time. Not only Smithy, but aframu has been with yeah. him the entire time. Super inefficient. The rest of Pain Gaming getting a pretty big gold lead because of uh, all the meandering in that jungle. Yeah, it's, 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 they're leaving double lift alone though, right? That's the success, but it's definitely not Pain. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So Smithy now by himself as Aphromoo and double back, maybe meeting up to lane once again. Does not look like they'll switch anything over for Dragon coming up here. Zion Spartan's going to stay on the bot side. Double lift picks up his cutlass, going back to BRTT's BF sword. They have switched to bot side, however, so Zion's life could get a little harder. Yeah, they're trying to avoid that all-in level six I was talking about for Riven. Trying to swap Gangplank out here. Mm -hmm. Let's see if CLG actually decide to answer. No, they're not. Sending Zion right back down into the jungle at the moment. Yeah. CLG not looking that great after their 0-2 start and current three-game losing streak. 
Crumbs mentioned on the analyst desk that they have the mental fortitude of a sun-dried tomato. I'm going to accept That's, that. That was a little interesting. Hold on. I'm going to accept rough. that as total fact. But okay. the, the, what will be answered by this game is whether a sun-dried tomato has strong mental fortitude. Because if COG wins, That's true. it'll prove that it does. Just kind of bases the ground for that. We'll get a constant here in this game. Yep. Ow! I still think sun-dried tomato taking sun and remaining a tomato and also remaining tasty shows like a really strong commitment yeah. to being a tomato. No preservatives needed. Well, top lane is going to be able to zone off Gangplank at least here. Zan's going to have to play just as careful as Mylon is. Cosmic bound the minions. will be good to go. Level 6 soon for Alpha Mood. They'll definitely have a bit more room to work with with that tempered fate and getting themselves into dangerous situations. Turret going in. Soul gold there for BRTT. So he's getting himself nice and fat. Him and Double Lift are actually even in CS right now. But those fights are going to be very painful. From the Draven, Mylon getting found in the jungle. Ooh. Smithy says, haven't you been aware? This is my jungle this game. <laughs> very true. <laughs> it's just where he's living. Uh, the cost of rent on that side of the jungle <laughs> is the bottom turret or the flash. CS on the top laner yeah. uh, and the dragon. So I wonder if they're going to want to renew when the lease is up on that side. I don't know. I would suggest against it. Tormented soil. Full welter's blue. Whoa! Lots of flashes. Oh, it is finally going to oh. get hit. And all the Dude. globals we thought would be spent on double lift are expended on Zion Spartan. I love that the hook picked and it up. And they are punishing this Riven, the snowball champ that you want to get going. Bane Gaming, keep him down. I feel like... Pain still misplayed that a little bit, though. There's 180 adoration stacks on BRTT, and Dwag auto-attacked a stun target <laughs> while the axe was on its way to cash hey, in on the hey, adoration. Leave the support alone. All right, Mylon, no flash here. There's a kick from McSmithy. Mylon gets stunned up. Looks like it's going to be a secondary. Use the orange. It could be K. Broken wings, one last hit. He actually didn't run away. He's trying to run back and forth, but he didn't really have anywhere to go in the in the first place. That turret is down. He had no safety, but that is exactly what Zion Spartan needed after being pressured in this bottom lane. Still, some 20 to 30 CS down. Yep, so G strike back with their own teleport, and double lift is going to be split pushing down bottom now. Cutlass completed. Quick lucidity boots into the sheen here for Kami. Yeah. And we're going to have to track the way that COG uses double lift as a split pusher here, because that's exactly what he's doing with the exhaust on Vayne. Yes. And I think this is the first exhaust we've seen on an AD carry, a true AD carry here at Worlds. And it's because he needs to be able to duel Draven. Normally, Draven's incredibly good against Vayne, because he can stand at the same auto attack range, and Vayne can be tumbling around, and Draven just hits him in the face yeah. with a spinning axe. With the exhaust specifically, though, double lift can win those 1v1s. Bit of that movement, or as I should say, slow from Cutlass as well. A lot of mechanics to keep himself alive. It's like double lift. Oh, it's like. Okay, let's start over. It's how he likes to play. It's easy when you fit the right word in there. Like we said before, the past seasons, he would just take cleanse on that, knowing he'd get himself into very deep fights and cleanse out. He likes to play for himself in these lanes. After Pobelter still keeping that pressure in the mid lane. Nice, evenly farmed between those two with the roaming that they've been doing. And now it looks like the teams are going to start getting that vision pushed up in the jungle. It's going to see a little bit more action here. First dragon of the game has already gone to pain. Five man mid here for CLG. Oh, Afro going to get hooked. Oh, no, he's not. Smithy oh, takes it. Pie to the face for Smithy. Afro Mood ducks on that one. And that's going to be the kill. Oh, wipe that for fate now because they're trying to come in for Pope Alter and double lift. A little late on the call there. Miscommunication and PNG. Pain looking like they may want to go oh. back in on this one. The Gangplank ultimate stopping them from doing anything. Fat forcing the flash for Pole Belter here. Will they keep going on this dude? They're coming in looking for a hook. He gets hit with a binding. Twisted Faith Gates going to show. Destiny does not allow Aphromu to sit in the brush. He also has to flash. The drawback of the two man face check there. Aphromu ducks out and Smithy <laughs> did get the memo. He sell them out. Oh man, it's just a tarp. Oh no! That was magical. And yeah, the CC chain by Pain. We saw how devastating it can be right there. Twisted Fate Gold Cart, Elise Cocoon, Thresh Hook. It seemed like Smithy was going to be fine. If they would have expected the CC chain, Alpha would have used Temper Fate right away. Right. But he was just like, all right, as soon as you're in between a CC, just jump me, bro. <laughs> uh, never happened. I'm sorry you're dying. Late. So, turret taking good damage. Got a blue card on there for a bit more oomph.
and Kami's gonna be out now. We'll see this play one more time. Whoop! Got the yeah. warden. Then gold card. Yeah, see, Aphromu ex expected Walk it. Up, he, play. he knew the skill shot was waiting in that push. Flash. That's why he dropped the warden immediately dodged, but Smithy, not so much. Also, Aphromu totally walked out of safe guard range there. I wouldn't have wanted to be close. I don't blame him. Nick Smithy was thinking, there's a bard in front of me. Nothing <laughs> can hit me now. <laughs> Bard's a big guy. aphromu has so, got dodges, though. Yeah. Even so, Payne playing this early game pretty well. They are a pretty slow team. Uh, one of the slowest teams mm -hmm. in CB LOL. I think their indecisiveness in the mid and late game is actually the main reason yeah. they aren't advancing out of this group, even. Uh, they had many opportunities to beat Flash Wolves earlier today, which would have actually put them in an opportunity here that if they win that game, beating CLG would have advanced them from the group, which is crazy to think about as a wildcard team, but they were so close to having that opportunity. I think they want to prove that had that Flash Wolves game gone a little better, that they are still a very good team, and they're showing it at least early here against CLG. Ward's coming up. One minute on to Dragon. Checking ultimates. Looks like they're all going to be up if nobody's pressured into using one here. Destiny is almost there, but Payne already has the vision they really want to get into this situation. Three to two on the board. Level nine for Pole Belter. Kami's almost about to hit 11. Not really going to matter too much for that 11 all. Payne is definitely ready to fight this. Yeah, Payne know that the vision is extremely important mm -hmm. for their comp. They're all based around picks. Uh, pick comp like this, if the if there's a timely black shield and they double up the CC, it will crumble very quickly to an all-in. Once again, CLG looking Waiting. for the five-man all-in around mid lane to try and open up the jungle. It feels like COD's strategy is almost running into some direct counters. Based on the way they're they're building their champions as well, Double If, Blade of the Rune King, working on a static shiv, which tells me he wants to be able to wave clear and split push. It also shows the summer spell. Mm -hmm. The pick of Ribbon very often wants to split push, so it kind of sets up this 1-3-1 with strong disengage in the mid lane. But it's against a twisted fate and a gangplank double globals, which is set up to deal with the 1-3-1. That's a nice pick, though, from CLG. Chain stunning on their own accord. Yep, and that's going to be Dragon for them as well. They move on down here. There is a teleport for Mylon, but no jungler, no go. Just a bit of waiting it out for the mistake. Like you said, Jet, yeah, indecisiveness. Fox is playing game. He can make some mistakes, not be in the right spot, and just Sir T walking through that wrong path allows CLG's forward vision to actually finally get a kill here. Evening up the score now, 3-3. Three three. Coming up on 16 minutes, CLG getting a bit of oomph from Dragon number one damage. See how they use this. Zion Spartan to the top lane. See if he can put BRT on the back foot. Does not look like it. No, it he has no finished <laughs> items right now. Bloodthirster to the Phage Kindle Gem. Zion Spartan trying to get himself built up. Black Fever at least. Still hasn't died yet either. 130 stacks there. 300 adoration or 300 for BRTT. Plus, uh, down on the other side in the solo lane, uh, Mylon has earned 463, 467 extra gold out of his parlay. Farming up very nicely. Still has that CS lead yep. over Zion. So not to mention Twisted Fate gets extra. There's, <laughs> ah! there's a lot of gold earning. We gotta keep track here. of so many passives yeah. here. What's he at? What's he at? Gotcha. Oh, it doesn't have a. We got it. We got it. We got it. Got it I don't here. Think nope. Counts on spectator mode. We can't check. Every CS gives him one to six gold, so roughly 500. He's rich. Aphromu, bad spot. This is that close in. Able to take down Aphromu immediately. In. No temper of fate coming out of that fight. Pole Belter still wants it. Tries to get the Soul Shackle on, but he can't look into the eyes of opponents for long enough to get it to stun. Zion Spartan trying. Wind Slash as well. Not doing much after Broken Wings could not connect everything. Pretty far off for kind of logic game in there. Yep, BRTT was able to cash in before he had to flash out there. Huge amount of gold spike right there for them. That's at least an extra 600 gold from that kill. So now really paying game looking to take control of this. Since while that was happening, they can still set up some split pushing and some nice deep vision in the jungle here. No, no it doesn't have any more time. Otherwise, you can. <laughs> Takes a journey through the jungle just for the sights. CLG. A little bit of waiting now. Teleport for Zion's partner is down. He'll be hovering on the bottom lane. Dragon not coming up for quite some time. So we'll see where CLG continues to focus. Pole Belter and Aphromu 
kind of roaming together here. Both have a bit of catch potential, but nobody behind them to finalize if they do grab anything. All right, we do have to see another swing down through the red side jungle too. CLG gonna try and keep up the plays. Last outer turret standing. And Mylon sees him coming. He's gonna back off play extremely safe. Nice little wall of defense created by the members of Conologic Gaming throughout the bottom side of the jungle here of Pain. Losing a little bit too much. They can't get behind Conologic Gaming to make this work. It's gonna be hard for them to get into these engages. And Mylon's gotta back off. This should be a turret trade. Pain should take yep. top, COD should take bottom. The question will be, will this play extend? Cold Hunter got two. Puts the black shield on himself, but he goes down due oh, to all the front end damage. He does live. I'm a liar. Kills for Sir T going down. Oh, does Tommy he? Going down. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. It's not on target. Nope. <laughs> That's all right. Yes. The timing of that eyes. was so precise. Oh, they're going to continue a dive. Stick out. You can't do that to the secondary turrets <laughs> because you have to kill yeah, the, first the first one. You can't do it. That's uh, Aphromu with the flare afterwards. <laughs> Best Bart ult. Worlds. Nobody. All right. Looks that does work looks. if you do it on the outermost turret. Teleport up top, though. <laughs> well, they yeah. can't. Did they? Uh, now he, he continued it. Yeah, that's a strong push. Mylon and BRTT give him enough oomph to take down that turret with Pobelt defending. Uh, this game heavily picking up rotation-wise. Twisted Fate Ultimate actually the only global still up on the map right now. The others have been expended. CLG doing a pretty good job actually traveling as a group of five, trying to pressure, yep. trying to reduce the effect of the extra globals there from pain. Yeah, well, specifically when Pobelter got two with that ultimate, he was so close to dying, but the spell vamp from the passive, when he got the second proc of his ultimate for damage, healed him just enough to stay alive. So if he would have died, like he, I think he got nearly into single digit health before he ended mm -hmm. up getting healed at the very end there. I was convinced he was dead. Looked like he was in the passive. Dead. Someone died. Pope is right next to him. Yep. Does not look like he's having fun in the mid lane right now, running away from both Kami and dude. BRTT comes in. He is back up to 81 adoration stacks on himself. As he just keeps charging and catching axes. It's actually not that dangerous for Poe Belter because he can see both skill shots coming, uh, the death sentence or the cocoon, yeah. and he can black shield himself. Neither of them will break it. The notorious P.O.B. likes to live dangerously. And it's paid off a little bit there in the mid game. CLG pulling back to pretty much even here. Four turrets, though. They have one turret advantage. Yep. Paint could uh, get some standing gold back. All the standing gold is really... Ooh, Zion, let's see how this uh, all-in works down there. Not mm. going to take it. <laughs> Big minion, minion wave yeah. and gold card ready. Unless Sion Spartan had flash advantage, I don't see him being able to take advantage of TF there. Analogic Gaming setting up somewhat around Baron, taking Scuttle control. The an adrenaline rush coming in from BRTT, but doesn't look like he really wants to take that fight all the way home. He doesn't have the vision to do so. Smithy and the rest of the team, though, still living on that side of the jungle. Looks like they have renewed Red. Yes, and they're gonna go in! Oh, Syndrome, but he's out. He's out, cured quickly. Does not have... <laughs> I think he's got a ward. He could've jumped. Does he have a charge in that? Yeah, I think he's got two charges. Yeah. Didn't want to risk it going under the turret. There's a lot of snares on Pain Gambit. If they were in the fog of war backing it up, he could have just cost himself a lot. Yeah, now Dragon's going to be up again. Take so it. the global game, Pobelter would have to teleport in. He just finished his Zonius, which is a huge power spike for Morg. He'll be able to burn this down. Doublelift's actually going to keep aggro on it. Still damage to Aphromoo. Tempered Fate just hits Mylon on the outside. He could be able to get out of this one quickly. Throwing down his ultimate. He knows he's going to die, so he tries to slow oh, the rest Afro's of going down to the Dragon. Surti is going to hit it. Afro was taking so much aggro damage from Dragon. Zion Spartan now gets singled out and taken down. Adoration stacks coming in for BRTT. He becomes even more rich. And they are on the hunt right now. Flash coming out. That was almost a hit from Dude. A little far off. Yeah, they are going to be able to take the Dragon after this, though. And pressure here mid from Kami. Blue buff TF. They'll probably be able to rotate and clean that up. Yeah, the Bard ultimate only catching one was not a clean initiation for COG, as well as Pobelter they're getting chunked as he teleported in. Afro took almost 70% of his life in dragon damage in there. In the beginning and then towards the top side, when it was started. Unfortunate. 
definitely difficult to very, start a fight there. Yeah, very few people on CLG got to do what they wanted to in this fight. Uh, beautiful fresh hook on Pabelther at the start. He still gets his ultimate off on four. And the zone, yeah, so... Yeah, oh, but dies right after. And watch Double just get chain CC right here. He gets gold carded, which he then flashes backwards. He wants to get back in the fight. Well, he, then, he then, zoned here by the barrel, and then he gets... Hits yeah. him. Ugh. Meanwhile, Zion gets one versus three up there. Yeah. Sub, what are you? Stunned forever. Also, I flashed back. About that cleanse. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, would have been really useful there. Yeah, uh, he's absolutely. gonna need his QSS. When he gets a QSS in late mm -hmm. game, it'll help. Right. But with the way the CC is layering, and the fact that Twisted Fate will reveal him even when he's in That's his true. final hour. That's true. It's a tough world to be vain. Oh man, Zeke's Harbinger already built up for dude as well. BRTT gonna be throwing out that much more pain on top of now his Yomu's finish. So oh. with that, he can get into range with Adrenaline Rush and a Yomu's. That's what it looks like, boys and girls. And Zion Spartan will go down. And call me. Surprise! Zion, you're not hunting BRTT. <laughs> Thank you for the round on him. Oh, oh, double, double lift is though. Hey, really dogging it right now. Ooh. Goes in, actually almost gets crit out by BRTT there. Will they start the fight? The magical journey to the back to the mid lane does save them. Everybody getting some frequent flyer miles on that one. They're going to be able to temper the barrels. Phase. There's no fight though. The barrels are ready to pop. They cannot get to the hit though with it doing damage. Smithy is going to get a kill for himself, but goes down valiantly. That's a shutdown on him going in for Mylon. You can see on the scoreboard there. And Mylon will finally go down to Pobelt. Oh, another hook here from It's not over. And from who's there, though. What a bloody little game we have here. We got ourselves a barn burner, that's for sure. <laughs> nine kills to nine. The gold is within 400, but that's mainly because Payne has so many gold gaining mechanics on their side. Yeah. Not like the gold gaining mechanics scale poorly. Like Twisted Fate and Gangplank also get extra gold and then scale amazingly with items as well. So it still means Payne has a Realistic gold lead. Payne's running the cash money comp. That's yeah, all they that's are. All they to really it. are. Let's Could see, where are they at right now, even? At, except for the jungler. Definitely have a lead in each one of their lanes. Double lift, I gotta say, though, 402. Obviously, nobody's gonna be high him. He is the highest in the game at 10,250 gold right now. The RTT very close, though, at 9,800. Yeah, Zeke's Harbinger is completed, though. Mm hmm. On to threat. Right quick for dude on that one. They can stay in range of each other. We actually saw, I've seen some teams. They'll get that and then they kind of separate. They're not next to each other enough for the charge. True. It's got to be a thousand range, but they're back and forth. The support is warding in the 80s middle and they really don't get the full effect of this. Yeah, especially with how split pushy this game is. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for Dude and BRTT to stay in the same place for yeah. long periods of time. Also, the CC setup is of the utmost importance here in this yeah. game. Because there are no true tanks, everyone's fairly squishy. Smithy on Lee Sin is probably the, <laughs> the tankiest person in the game. He's just got Dead mostly health plate. there, yeah. Armor from Dead Man's yeah. Plate. Ward Wars, once again. Also becomes incredibly important to track the shorter cooldowns, the mini cooldowns from your basic abilities of the enemy uh, when so there's so much damage on the field uh, to know when you can continue with a skirmish. Because in this scenario, even if somebody goes down instantly, both teams have enough damage that they can still combo and come out with a team five victory. Here, here. Can they chain a ward on it? Ah! The instant lantern here, and Smithy gets hooked! That's quite a bit of damage for Rick Smithy. He's always left out to dry as the only one that can get his resonating strike in. Uh, Whoa, the flash. There, there. the flash forward. Friend, he saw the play. Mylon had one Team, of those please. as well earlier the, in the week. Oh, the cleanse comes out. Was it too early? That was one of those low oh, pink QSS. No. Revenge for Kami. He did that twice on the first day. The latency is so low in this environment, I feel like sometimes the players are used to doing it other ways. This is a huge part of oh, Yep, when it rains, it pours here. Pain right up the middle. Gonna be two turrets after that pick as well. Yeah, sometimes these guys are so used to predicting the CC to land on them yeah. so they can QSS it right away. CLG kind of tunneling on the all-in there to try and kill BRTT before he can click the lantern. Yeah, BRTT and Kami are getting pretty fed. Not to mention Gangplank is no slouch for Mylon. Uh, this is after the fact. 
Yep. Oh! Just a fraction of a second. Just a tiny bit early. early. Man. You're dead. <laughs> Didn't see the emoticon last time. That was cheeky. <laughs> Very nicely done. 30 seconds on to Dragon. They will head down there. Zion Spartan's already trying to clear waves and put some pressure on the bottom lane, but it's exactly where Payne wants to go right now. Will they be able to kind of teeter this back and forth with the Baron? Or are they just going to burn down Dragon? Looks like they are backing. Nothing too crazy is going to happen. Yeah, I think Payne's putting up a pretty strong case to take down both CLG and Flash Wolves in games here at Worlds. Be the first wildcard team to win to multiple up. games at the World Championship. They were so close to beating Flash Wolves earlier today. Imagine if that had been different. Unfortunately, it's not. So yeah. this is the way it is. Well, we mentioned it. It, it falls back on Payne having longer wins and longer losses. There's more room for mistakes. Their undecidedness in making strategies work, it really cost them. Yeah. As BRTT would say, they definitely deserve respect. Absolutely the respect the strongest man. wild card here, but uh, dude. Is yeah. the getter. They're oh. trying to give the kill to double it. Dude, where's my Success. team? <laughs> They're dragon. They're taking dragon. <laughs> Objective focus. The third of the game. Yep. The tax in that side of the jungle continues to be paid by COG and Dragon. Parked his team at Dragon and forgot. 12 to 10, oh, 29 boy. minutes in, 3k gold lead here. Payne coming in strong. That's going to be the teleport top from Mylon, but he's not flying Belter anywhere. teleport. It's not a home guard. Bo Belter, straight in. Oh, wide left on that one. He is going to get the soul shackle off the flash. Coming on back. It is not going to be in time for the Zanyas. The stand aside does, however, hit. More adoration, baby. He cashes in. It's the League of Draven this game. And Mylon's now going to have a problem. Double lift on his backside. A few shots for him. Not healing himself enough, though. Tumbles out of the damage. Oh, and he's card. back. The card comes through, and it's wild enough to take down Double Lift. A shutdown coming in for Kami. The best thing to see about great TFs is when they decide to use red card instead for the AoE. Whoa, Can Smithy make it Nada. out? What is... <laughs> No? Just dug your own oh, grave! You Wait! No! Oh! Spider Bites, some of the deadliest. Zion Spartan now in the top, not gonna pull out anything crazy. Closes his eyes and wishes for the best. The second best thing is when you know you have the kill secured and you blue card kill. <laughs> Kobe, you said when it rains it pours, but now it's a torrential downpour. Yeah. COG, an A6000 gold plus the Baron looking like this, especially since COG's trying to pull a split push composition with very little tank presence. Stop the drink! Oh, oh, it's got 600. Can he meet it? Ah, he can't meet it. <laughs> that would have been fantastic, though. Looks like pain permanently flying the flag right now as they get themselves up to 17 to 11. Every time there's a play, they're just showing glitter with that control six. Three of four dragons. First Baron here. Let's see how much of a power play they can work. Aphromoo trying to give a little more versatility to the team with a banner command. Hopefully they don't have to go to every lane now. Yeah, just trying to get the split push going against Twisted Fake, Gank, mm -hmm. Flank, and Double Teleport. Not easy. Not they at all. Ended up trying to get some flanks going off, but Ping Gaming has just been one step ahead of the game. Shutting down Pobelter through Zonyas yep. with ease, and Kami just hit his death cap, which is pretty terrifying for COG. Tense. Infinity Edge. Triforce. The build of another Infinity Edge, but probably a Last Whisper and a Bloodthirster. So just these guys being able to be items ahead here. And Zion Spartan still building damage himself is going to have to zero out people. That's what you There's a dead get. end in that Take magical journey. Aphromoo with the troll. Whenever there's a really small magical journey like that, I like running through it multiple times. Absolutely. A small, fun little game. We should get legs oh, like no, gold. he didn't. He <laughs> two infinity edges. Hey, that is a gank. <laughs> that is a viable gangplank build. Yep, when yeah, gangplank yep. was actually making it through the pick ban phase on a regular basis, you would see half of them going double infinity edge for the larger crits and the better mm -hmm. barrels, and the other guys going phantom dancer for the split push and cheaper crit chance. Right. This is absolutely a viable build, especially when you're ahead. So G trying to split push against this barrened up pain team, though, and uh, pain to look like Ooh. they're going to slow down the train. Yeah, that's going to be an inhib if COG doesn't come back right away. Pepper fate. dapro has got it on that one. Second inhibitor. Double lift has to channel a regular recall here, though, and they're going to come oh, from the bounce. So. No, he didn't. Now he's back he? again. A little indecisive. Home guard from Zion Spartan's already been seen. It's not enough to scare Pain Gaming off of this one. 
There's a hit. Mylon gets out of that one with an orange. Everything's okay. And it looks like CLG is just trying to batter PNG off their doorstep here. But Payne, they have zero cares in the world right now for any damage CLG is going to do. And they are right in their face. There's Not the catch on a double lift. Now he's got the cleanse. He waits for another one to hit so he didn't get doubled up. Very nicely done there as Payne stacked their crowd control. What? Payne coming out huge in the fight. It doesn't matter that they use their crowd control first. They have the front end damage to burst down and kill CLG all the way. Another crowd control lockup coming in from Kami. The triple kill coming in from Mylon. Their eyes are on the Nexus. This is going to be game. Payne, 20 kills to 11. Shut down CLG, what looks like with the perfect call for Payne. Now for a move. Zion oh, doing what alive. they can. Broken wings and wind slash ready to be used, but Zion can't close the gap. Goes for Kami. Kami's got the Zanyas. They're onto Zion now, and he's forced to retreat from his own base as Mylon sets up the barrels. And Payne Gaming takes down Connor Logic Gaming. Well played game here by Payne, becoming the first wildcard team to win multiple games at the World Championship. In a pretty hefty group. And as happy as they can be with that, they're probably asking themselves, what if? Because the team that won the group, Flash Wolves, Payne played them better than anyone else here did. And they were actually ridiculously close to advancing from this group. You know, Jad, I think as you said it, Payne can easily reflect on the length of their games. Being able to shorten those up and sure up the weaknesses of indecisiveness, not knowing where they want to go with the strategy of Dragons not on the map, having things on their plate. Both of these teams had dreams of getting two worlds, and they were able to achieve those, even though they won't make it past groups. No. Still a huge accomplishment for both these teams to get here. Really the best season for both teams. A 16-0 streak for Payne to come in on this. They were beat by Kaboom last year to not make it to this spot. CLG with their best season in first place, but to then also be thwarted in group stages. First ever victory for CLG in the North American LCS yeah. to grab that number one seed. Yes, and their fate was decided before this game yeah. when Flash was up, stated Coup. Otherwise, this actually would have been a game had the results stayed the same and would knock CLG out. But that will actually do it for Group A. I, for CLG, it's definitely worth going back and figuring out because they knew we aren't playing like Counter Logic Gaming. That you cannot enter at any group stage in that sort, especially even in their wins, that we weren't playing like us. But yeah. you still have to find that win again if it wasn't you or not. CLG really fell apart. 2 0, early leaders in the group, four game losing streak to close. The games against Ku, they really did unravel, yeah. kind of hit them hard. Mm -hmm. And they, since they ended up playing them two games in a row, final, great, uh, final game at the end of last week, first yeah. game here today, it didn't seem like they were ever able to fully recover. But also, even their first victory over Flash Wolves, they nearly lost that game. So a dicey world for CLG. Uh, Hotshot, their owner, was tweeting that it was still a very successful season after all. So hopefully they can keep their hells head high. But it's a lot of disappointment for CLG when they were the number one seed in this group and they tie for last. Very strong play coming out. A lot of things at CLG within picks and bans, not falling back to what worked for them at the end of the season. Nick Smithy going back to Gragas, a few of the Lees definitely worked. Some of the Lees play for him. Things that allowed Alfremu to catch with Nick Smithy, start things around the map, get the roam going, really weren't in their wheelhouse this time. Yeah, trying to go for the early echo picks to sort of bait the swap of it, sending it up to Zion Spartan, not quite working out for them. For whatever reason, it felt like Zion Spartan, in a meta of carry top laners, it was supposed to be so sweet for him, but he didn't really have a single super good game. And that was going to be one of the rocks that COG would rely upon. Obviously, it is a team effort. That's what COG keeps preaching. They're not about yeah. singling out individuals. We can see Shock setting up with an interview with your League of Draven, BRTT, breaking out the Draven against Double Ifs Vayne. Cashed in quite a few times this game and was not afraid to get on the front line. He played Draven as Draven should be. Pain, pain were very exciting this game, and they played it really well. Kami got his TF, yeah. showed why that it was, was so dangerous Everybody for Pain. Yeah, even uh, Mylon there on the double infinity edge gangplank were some big crits to end it out. If you're going to fire on him, you got to fire hard. Looking at the rest of the yeah. team, Dude coming up big as well with the way that they were able to play their composition, getting his hooks in. And really, overall, this guy's been in the professional scene for a very, very long time. Back on AAA. Yeah. So having his chance back here again had to feel good. He ended up replacing Coralius as the support of Against All Authority yeah. back in the spring split of yep. Season 3 LCS. Crazy stuff.
really been around multiple different organizations, making it to Worlds, and then not only just making it to Worlds, winning two games. Uh, it is encouraging for the entirety of the Brazilian scene to see how successful Payne was here at this World Championship. Maybe next year they can get out of groups. Absolutely. Let's see what they have to say. Right now we're going to head down to Shox in the interview lounge, who is joined by Payne Gaming's AD Carey. Thank you so much indeed. Joined by BRTT after taking the victory over Counter Logic Gaming and a nice one at that. Um, of course, I can assume that you won't be overly thrilled with this, seeing how you guys didn't make it out of group stage. How do you reflect though on this game? Because it seems like you really wanted to prove something in terms of individual skill, picking the Draven up against that vein. So you guys really didn't pass out of groups, but you made a very good match, especially in this last one with the Draven. How did you want to show a little bit more, show your gameplay? É, eu não acho que o pick do Draven foi para provar alguma coisa. É, a gente já tinha treinado algumas vezes de picar o Draven em cima de Vayne e acabou que aconteceu essa oportunidade e funcionou muito bem, graças a Deus. Yeah, I didn't try to pick Draven just to to show my skills or anything. We've been training that against Vayne and it ended up happening, so that was good. Yeah, whatever happened, you still got that win versus CLG. I feel like there were certain moments in a tournament where there, it was very close and you could have maybe grabbed more games. What for you is maybe the biggest regret or the biggest thing that you think we should have done this and we could have maybe made it? In other games, we almost got there. You almost got there. What do you think you could have done a little bit different to really make a difference out of the group? I think that since the first day we came here in Europe, we noticed that our biggest problem was as decisões no mid-game, no, no meio do jogo, porque o nosso começo do jogo costuma ser bem forte e deu para deu mostrar isso nesse Mundial, só que acaba que chega no, no mid-game e a gente tem alguns problemas de comunicação, de call, que acaba fazendo com que o jogo desande bastante, eu acho que esse é o maior problema. Okay, so since the first day we got into Europe for, for the bootcamp, uh, we saw that and realized that our problem was the communication and the decision making during the mid game. Our early game is really strong and we kind of proved that for in, uh, during Worlds. So we really had to improve that and that's what we think that we have to, to improve at. Yes, definitely some more games you could take. Even with all that, the most wins ever for a wildcard team at Worlds, the most wins ever for a Brazilian team, it's I don't want to say it's a great start because you must feel that there was so much more you can do, but what do you think, looking at the future, what can you do with this team if you get another chance? Então, realmente, é a segunda, é a segunda vez que o Brasil vem para o Mundial e dessa vez ganhamos dois jogos. Está uh, tá melhorando cada vez mais. O que, que você acha que o Brasil está fazendo? O que, que você acha que, como você olhando para o futuro, vê esse time tendo uma nova oportunidade no World? Ah, eu acho que isso é uma prova de que o cenário brasileiro está tá aumentando muito o nível, os times do Brasil são muito fortes, então... Mesmo a gente treinando só com times da nossa região, tá dando para tipo, pra, tá dando para evoluir bastante. É claro que que não está no, no nível ideal ainda. É claro, é, é claro que o bootcamp ajudou bastante, só que eu consigo ver que o nosso cenário está evoluindo muito, é, mesmo estando um pouco distante ainda da, das outras regiões, mas. É. So we, we really see that Brazilian scene is improving a lot, even though we're training only with the local teams. When you have a chance to boot camp, we can really learn and improve our game. So that's what we're, we expect, continue growing and really showing that our team and our, our capacity. Well, uh, BRTT, with all that, it, you do look a little down to me, and I can totally understand why. But one thing is for sure, even right here, the Brazilian fans were behind you and a lot of fans. Is there anything you want to say to them? Então a gente percebe que mesmo assim você parece um pouquinho chateado, mas uh, tem muita, muitos fãs brasileiros aqui presentes que estão torcendo por você. Tem alguma mensagem que você gostaria de passar para eles? Ah, eu, esse lance chateado eu não, não sei. É, é claro que depois do jogo da, contra a Flash Wolves eu fiquei, eu acho que foi o jogo que eu fiquei mais chateado, porque ficou um gostinho ali que, nossa cara, aquele jogo realmente estava na nossa mão. Só que eu estou muito satisfeito com o nosso desempenho, mesmo a gente não tendo passado da, da fase de grupo, a gente conseguiu mostrar um bom jogo e, e, e era isso que eu queria. Eu queria mostrar que o, que o Brasil tem força realmente para bater de frente com os outros times e foi isso que aconteceu. Eu gostaria de agradecer todos os fãs do Brasil, todos os fãs ao redor do mundo todo pela força que eles nunca desistiram da gente. Até o último jogo aqui eles estavam torcendo. A torcida daqui também que torceu muito. Muito obrigado a todos. Chamo vocês, é nóis. So yeah, I uh, really want to appreciate it. I thought I was a little bit down, but uh, because of the, the, the game against Flash Wolves that we won almost won, we almost got it. So we really felt that 
that taste of victory, but and it didn't come. But right now, I'm really relieved, but I really want to thank all the crowd, not only here, but in all over the world. And the crowd here was really yelling and screaming our name, so thank you very much. I love you all, not, not the guys from Brazil, but all over the world that supports us. Thank you very much. Well, it's true. They have been cheering for you the whole time. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to thank see you. you guys play. Obrigada. Well, guys, take it away. Thank you, Shocks. You know, a, a tremendous victory for them. The best showing of an international wildcard team ever at the World Championship. And so close, actually, to making it out of this group. They really should be holding their heads high with the showing that they put up in this group stage. 100%. What a performance out of these guys. You know, they came through as heavy underdogs. And if that, was, if that Flash Wolf game had have been one decisive team fight away, that Baron play, yes. we could be looking at a completely different group set up. And they played like champions the whole way through. They were always trying to play their style of League of Legends. You can see that they've taken things away from this that are going to be invaluable. And really, two wins for a wild card team just shows how quickly Brazil, at least, is closing the gap. I'm a bit disappointed that they had banned Gangplank all the games and then they just play it out here and it wasn't a champion that shouldn't have, it wasn't bad. You know, I think he could have played this Gangplank out the entire tournament and we could have seen another win just out of the sheer overpoweredness of the champion and you know what, it's something that you learn and it's hindsight 2020. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest of Gangplanks, but at least he got to play it here. I like the Twisted Fate and the Draven versus the Vayne. So they had things that seemed practiced coming in here, but they got pretty much everything they would want in this draft. Then they went out on a high note here. And if nothing else, that team has swagger. I mean, the <laughs> uh, Twisted absolutely. Fate and the Draven were pretty on point. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I do want to look at the flip side of the coin for just a moment. CLG, you know, 2-1 to start in, in, in week one, and then oh. closing out the day here, 0-3. Oh, Where's that? I mean, oh, I the get... rise and fall <laughs> oh. of, of America's number Listen one it. seed. That boat is long. <laughs> it's right at the bottom it, it's here. But, uh, it's with all of the sun-dried tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> smashed and shriveled on the floor. Is that what's going yeah, on? Yeah, across? an interesting <laughs> fact about this game, though. Aframu did 5,400 damage. With one damage ability, by the way, this is Bard. <laughs> Zion Spartan on Riven did 5,469. So, uh... So he won. <laughs> so yeah, you're telling me how damaged him. More damage, <laughs> more damage uh, but, but, uh... But, this uh, wasn't a game where you could really judge out of CLG. They yeah, definitely yeah. were not playing anywhere, how they, any, how, how they play the entire group stage. It just wasn't them. They're just having fun. I think they just wanted to get it out yeah. over with. I think they were... they, they probably feel embarrassed to be here with all the expectations they had set up. I actually think that's worse, though. If you can't pull it together for one game for your fans, and, like, don't get me wrong, as I said, I like this is one of those games where you just have to surely come out and put on a good performance, and they can honestly take very little away from this world's experience now. Yeah, and I think they were rather tilted coming into this game. You pick the vain blind pick, you pick it, you pick exhaust as well. He went full prototype black on that one. Yeah, it's a solo play type of style there. You want to go ahead and split push, and you saw it there. It looked like they had lost some trust in each other, and they just went all out on, let's try to carry this game by one individual instead of a team. And that was just CLG. I think they got in their own heads and said, our team play wasn't working. Let's just try this last thing. Well, now, you know, regardless of their world's performance, I do think it is important to note the journey that they took to get here, right? CLG at at Worlds alone is already a big accomplishment for that organization and their growth in, in more recent times. I guess it really speaks to the chase is better than the cash. They can just forget about the cash for this one because they had a fantastic run all the way through where they really showed their improvement as a team into a high level matches, such as the one of uh, Madison Square Garden. But for here, it just... I think one thing that you can take away is that their preparation going into big matches has been much better than it has been in the past. So credit to whoever is responsible for behind that, their new coaching staff and all those things, because they were a team that used to look good once they got on Summoner's Rift. Now they're looking good going into the matches, and they had one very good strategy. So there definitely are some good signs there for the future of CLG. Yeah, and getting this experience under their belt as well. You look at somebody like Poe Belter, this was his first playoffs, even getting in there, and then he won playoffs. So first worlds for a lot of these guys to actually be up there on that stage so they have that under their belt. They can get that experience and get some of those nerves out of the way for maybe next time they show up here. Now, ending on a high note real quick with this group, I think what today showed, if anything, was that nothing was decided necessarily in week one. Yep. So much can happen in week two. We had a team that was one and two going into, you know, into this day. 
3 0, and now they're at the top of the group first coming out of it. Years of watching Animal Planet could not have prepared me to see tigers get slain by wolves. It just did not make any sense going with the preparation. <laughs> How often do those two things run into each other, Cubs? <laughs> what are you this watching? Is a very <laughs> thing. But yeah, the flash was really the highlight of this group. It was entertaining to say the least. Yes. It was a Cinderella story in itself of poor play from game one but constantly improving, expanding the champion pool and meeting every single expectation and more. Absolutely. Well, we're going to check in with you at home and see your world's big play callouts at De Facto Genius. Put it very simply, Jinx still has it. Here is your world's big play to close out Group A. From three members of Counter Logic Gaming, and they're right back here. Yeah. Another unstoppable force. Four member pop up. Double lift on the outside. They're going to actually have to look away from him. Stake's going to take down a 1v1. Double kill coming in for NL. Looking for a triple kill. That's a triple. That's going to be the quadra. He gets a penta kill. NL penta kill. Up from the flash wolves comes up Trump again. Everyone's there helping him out, but NL, wow, that was such a big change up bringing this guy into the line. Yeah, I think the communication issues that they had with Kramer were definitely just something that was only affecting them that day when they sub in NL. Boom. Never like lose, man. Never team. lose. He lost one game. He didn't lose one <laughs> game. He lost one. <laughs> but next, Sometimes lose. <laughs> next, next to never lose. All right, well, with Group A on the books, let's take a look at how the teams stacked up. The LMS's Flash Wolves will enter the quarterfinals as the number one seed, with Korea's Koo Tigers taking the number two spot. Meanwhile, CLG and Pain Gaming will have to catch the action in London from the stands. Well, that does it for today, but tomorrow we'll get to see who rises to the top of Group C. It starts with SK Telecom versus Edward Gaming. Big match up there. Then the Bangkok Titans will challenge H2K. And they'll stay on the rift to go up against Edward Gaming following that. The action kicks off at 2 p.m. Central European Summertime. That's 5 a.m. Pacific, so set your alarms. Now I'm going to have to remember to do just the same. Gentlemen, we're starting the day off tomorrow with a very big matchup. This is one that SKT got the better of last time. But if G, uh, EDG can equalize here, we push ourselves possibly to a tiebreaker for first place in this group. Yeah, and this is a matchup that a lot of people are thinking is going to be the finals of the entire tournament. And last time they went head-to-head, -head, EDG did blind pick a lot of things. And I thought they were milking SKT for some strategies. But I want to see if that continues, if they try to get more out of them, or if they're just going to clash against them this time and try to see if they can actually hold up and then force a tiebreaker. Yeah, and EDG is a really proud team. They have some of the most proud, like, clear love. They have Pawn. So... They, they will throw everything at this matchup. This is going to be huge for the number one seed, and I can't wait to see it get underway. Yeah, I wouldn't count the first encounter that they had as a telltale as to what's going to happen mm -hmm. this time around. At MSI, in the group stage, SKT did the same thing. They obliterated EDG, and then they ended up losing to, to them in the final. So this time, fresh slate. Anybody could take this. Well, without a doubt, they've had plenty of time to prepare for it, and it will be their biggest matchup of the day. That's going to do it for us tonight. So for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for your daily recap of Worlds Tonight in just 15 minutes. At the 2015 League of Legends World Championships. Exhaust is ticking away. Double is below 100 HP. Smith and Gorilla going to chase him down. First blood to top lane, Darius. Et aujourd'hui, on gîte les dégâts. Smith, le petit. An undeniable number one seed in Group A. Yes, 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 the shockwave catches it now. He's guard against the wall. Snake is looking to kill the tower. He's got a lich bait. He's going to be able to hit some damage. Super minions are still pushing into the base. And now he's got two. He's looking for more. That's a triple kill. And he's excited. Heartbreak for Pain Gaming. We do see Dude rocking up. BRTT is going to try to get away with that passive. The oh. Oh. Boy, oh. A slam dunk. Christmas, we you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Double kill coming in for NL, looking for a triple kill. That's a triple. That's going to be the quadra. He gets a penta kill. NL, penta kill. Counter Logic Gaming will fall to the Flash Wolves. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. To the backside there.
<laughs> Last time I played with you guys, I just wanted to stop pain gaming so I don't get those stupid Facebook messages about how BRTT greater than double it. <laughs> Everybody getting some frequent flyer miles on that one. They're going to be able to temper the barrels. There's no fight though. The barrels are ready to pop. It doesn't matter that they use their crowd control first. They have the front end damage to burst down and kill CLG all the way. And pain gaming takes down Counter Logic Gaming.